All right, we are here in London on uh, Saturday 31st of October and I'm here with Laura Panak. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, we have a little uh, walk and talk. In yes. <laughs> um, we basically just had uh, the first half of your workshop, right? Yeah. On portrait photography um, maybe you can give a quick overview of what people actually do and what you were talking about um, well, it was a great turnout it was fantastic mm. it looked like we had about 40 50 people yeah um, so we started the day by just kind of me introducing myself sort of saying what I do showing a bit of work um, and then I really wanted to start the conversation about you know approaching people and kind of how we take portraits and because we're kind of a little bit limited on time that will hopefully push people to really make the most of it mm -hmm. and really start approaching people that they wouldn't normally approach. Um, and also we just talked really about kind of like the methods of that and also kind of like the dynamics of how you form that relationship, mm -hmm. especially with a stranger um, and what you can get out of a portrait. Mm -hmm. So I kind of shared a few stories of challenging circumstances um, instances that I've learnt from yes. and, um, and also kind of my experiences where it really kind of forced me to rethink how I approach mm -hmm. as well. I really like the one story you told about the nudist camp, right? Okay. Well, it was, it's one of the pictures that immediately like I saw on your website and really stuck with me and I like the story that you went there for a few weeks, it was kind of a personal project so maybe you can tell a little bit about uh, this well, it wasn't. It wasn't uh, one camp, and I didn't go okay. there for a few weeks. It took about <laughs> three years. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, as I explained, I um, for about a year and a half, I I researched and sourced individual people that were naturists around the UK, and then I um, gained access mm -hmm. to specific sites around the UK. So there are about mm -hmm. thirty different clubs in the UK um, where it's legal to be naked, and it's also kind of they're like holiday camps. Mm -hmm. So then I organized trips for about a year and a half, something like that. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then I brought these young people together who were strangers, who didn't mm. know each other, but they all had an interest in being a naturist. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of spent two or three days together, or we spent a week together. So there was about 30 or 40 different trips mm -hmm. uh, all wow. around the UK okay. at different clubs. And you went alone? Yeah. Just by yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. I went with them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I kind of orchestrated it. So, mm. you know, I'd send out an email saying, right, everyone, this week we're going to. Yeah. And then it was kind of, you know, it was there for their enjoyment. It was, I wanted them to be able to relax mm. and for it to be very natural, but for me to have permission to photograph. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you also, you also mentioned that. Uh, you basically the purpose of the re the purpose of your photography is learning you know yeah. many ways so mm -hmm. what did you learn from <clears throat> this particular project um well one thing that i really wanted to learn more about was photographing groups mm -hmm. so um that was quite a big thing for me and i knew that there would always be more than one person um, and i also kind of wanted to really challenge myself with regards to how i photograph people doing things mm -hmm. in a very natural way and how not to disrupt Kind of what I want to photograph but at the same time um, you know capture some sense of reality yeah um, so that was quite important for me and it also forced me to really kind of put myself in a vulnerable position where I was learning the dynamics of photographing somebody um, and I also learned you know about being an actress because yeah it, I was I was very curious as to why people would want to do it mm. okay and um do you, do you make a hard distinction between personal work and commercial work? Or do you think like your personal style that you constantly develop is really like a huge element of your commercial work? Like do people book you because of your particular style? Yeah, so um, I mean there's a lot of commercial work that I shoot that kind of I would say is quite irrelevant to my mm. personal work or it's not projects that I would necessarily take on as personal work. Mm -hmm. But I think that um, you know the reason that people do approach me for projects or commission me yeah. is because they would want me to photograph something in particular yeah. in my style. May we have a seat here yeah, before sure. we get to the loud road again? Yeah, sorry. Yes. No, cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's kind of. Um, I, but then I also kind of have quite a large distinction between my personal work and my commission work in the sense that I really set myself personal projects. 
and I'm very dedicated to them mm -hmm. and I've got com complete creative freedom and they're so important to me mm -hmm. and I immerse myself so much into them and with commissioned work it's very much about collaboration yeah. as well because it's not just my ideas that are coming into mm -hmm. play it's lots of other people's mm -hmm. so it's about kind of more having a conversation between us and then creating something together mm -hmm. whereas my personal work is more about me just kind of going out there and so what do you think about compromise I think it's you, important yeah. and I, I think that it's um, it opens your mind mm. you know my way is not necessarily the right way yeah. and I'm constantly learning and I'm constantly developing so when somebody else you know has an idea that I don't necessarily like I'll always try it to see what happens mm. um, but I also think it's very important to kind of value what you do and value your artistic you know, intellects and your kind of your approach and your own style. Because if somebody's booking you, mm. there's no point photographing something in a completely different way yeah. if that doesn't resonate with why they've mm. why they've chosen you yeah. in the first place. And I think also one one thing that's very particular to your style is like you seem to be to get in good conversations with people and you know uh, really put the, the essence of the soul maybe in a picture. Uh, have you become friends with many of your subjects? I think that um, taking somebody's picture is a very unique experience mm. and I think that you always both walk away feeling like you've had an experience um, but I think that it's kind of like any relationship like it can form into a friendship or you know very easily mm. um, I think it's the, the the question is quite interesting with regards to young people mm -hmm. because um, I was speaking to somebody about this yesterday about the fact that when you're photographing a teenager or you're photographing a child you're not necessarily a figure of authority and you're also kind of not a peer mm -hmm. so you're on you're in that weird kind of like no man's land yeah so when you leave that situation are you kind of buddies or have you just walked in and walked out mm. or are you this figure of influence so mm. it's quite interesting i think that um i hope that and I try not to think too much about the after relationship, but I hope that within the moment that I photograph somebody, that mm. we form a connection. Okay. And how how personal is your work? Like, uh, how do you feel about sharing a lot of your photographs, about sharing your, your images on, on social media? Is this something completely different from, you know, the work you do with film cameras and, and bigger cameras? Or? What do you, you, sorry, I'm a little bit confused. Yeah. With regards to my personal work, you mean, um, do I have a problem sharing no. it online? Or? No, like how your personal relation with the work, yeah. relation with the work, like how important is, for example, to get the work out there for people to be seen, and how much is it that you are basically fulfilled by just taking the picture itself? Okay, yeah, I think it's a really interesting question, mm. and I think it's also about um, the fact that the kind of metaphor that I would use mm. is that. Um, it's kind of like my voice. So yeah. I like my own photography. I um, I genuinely can't look at it objectively. Okay. I don't necessarily mm. like it. And I kind of, I for me, it's it's more about kind of the craft and enjoying and learning. Yeah. And I like looking at images afterwards because they remind me of things and they spark emotions and they spark memories. Mm. But I think for me, it's it's more about kind of putting it out there, just like I would have a conversation with somebody. Yeah, it's not necessarily um, an end result mm. or to gain anything out of mm. it. It's actually more just because I find it interesting. Mm. And I think that also, <clears throat> I love looking at photography. Mm. So for me, it's really interesting to kind of like be part of that network where okay. you're kind of all sharing. Mm -hmm. And I think that you learn more when you share because then people criticize. Mm -hmm. And I very much kind of welcome that and I very much enjoy having a conversation about images okay. that can kind of help you progress as an artist. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, some people for sure have been in the situation where they got like extremely negative feedback as well, or mm -hmm. like harsh mm -hmm. feedback because people are anonymous on the internet mm -hmm. and you know, has it ever has it ever happened to you? Oh yeah, project? yeah, definitely. And it's never been anonymous, and or mm. maybe some some of it has. And actually, I've always welcomed that as long as it's been constructive. Mm. Um, and I find that a lot of the negative comments that I get are actually completely, um, they're kind of hilarious in a way because it shows that they haven't actually 
read anything about the process of the images yeah. or like for example when a young British naturist you know people form all these judgments when they don't actually know why I've taken the pictures mm. they don't know how I've taken the pictures they don't even know who the pictures are of um, so when it's an ignorant comment I kind of ignore it yeah um, but when it's you know constructive or when it's interesting mm. I think that's really important I yeah. value that so okay and um, maybe to fi finish off because we have to head mm -hmm. off soon um, yeah what what are you currently working on and what are you looking forward to working on in the f near future? Um, well, I'm currently working on lots of different projects um, and I'm really looking forward. I'm using my 5.4 camera more, which I'm really enjoying. Um, but 5.4, how big is it actually? How Do you have it with you? No, no, I don't, no. Okay. But it's kind it's of, you big, have to put right? it on a tripod, yeah. right? And um, I'm, I'm really enjoying that because it is like starting a game. Mm. Like, I look through the viewfinder and I'm like, oh, I don't understand. Yeah. And, and I really, really like that. Mm. Um, it feels like going back to basics. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of enjoying that and just kind of lots of different projects here and in other countries mm. and trying to keep myself busy. Really. Okay. So, yeah. Good. That's great. Thank you very Thanks much for, for the interview. Me. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Bye.